Ian David Boyle, and I'm quitting alcohol. What a fucking game today. So the Sydney Swans just won the first qualifying final, and it was fucking incredible. So I've been real low-key on the Swans this year. They finished number one in the league, but their last, like, six weeks, I think they lost five of the last six. They won, like fucking 15 of the first 16 and then towards the end of the year got belted by over 100 points lost five of six and just looked fucking shit so i was like all right they're dropping the ball then this game today for three and a half quarters afl football is four quarters like all good football it's four quarters So for three and a half of those quarters, the Swans looked absolutely fucking dog shit. And it was, it's one of those things where they finished first, they won the minor premiership, so they're technically the best team in the league, but their finals history in like the last five or six years hasn't been good. They can be good during the season, then they get to the finals and they sort of fucking tank it. Except for when they made the grand final a couple of years ago. They won a few games to get into the grand final, then tanked the grand final and lost by almost 100 points. So today, it was feeling like that for three and a half quarters. They were behind the whole fucking time. They were down by 28 points. And the only thing keeping them in the game was the best player in the league at the moment, Isaac Heaney, the blonde fucking stunner. Took a one-handed mark, kicked a goal, took a fucking specky, a fucking hanger, probably mark of the year. If you're not from Australia and you want to see some fucking highlights of this game, just type in Sydney Swans versus GWS highlights. You'll see this Isaac Heaney kid. He's a fucking miracle worker, this kid. Fucking blonde hair, just hard as fuck. So good. He was the only thing keeping us in it. GWS, Greater Western Sydney. They're like this new fucking team. So it's two Sydney teams versus each other. So there's a rivalry going on. And for three and a half quarters, you just thought, fuck, it's going to happen again. We're going to get rolled today, we'll play next week in elimination final, we'll probably get rolled again, and then the season's over, then fucking, what happened? We finished fucking number one, who gives a shit? We don't perform in the finals, and it fucking felt like that, I tell you what, and then I don't know what happened, the last 20 minutes of the game was absolutely fucking electric. All the guns, Errol Goulden, Tom Papley, Heaney, Mills, Brody Grundy, fucking, they all stepped up. Campbell, Parker did some good things. They just fucking turned it on and fucking, they were down 21 going into the last quarter. They turned it around, ended up winning by six. And now there's a vibe. There's a fucking vibe now. I tell you what it feels like. It feels like 2005. (laughs) 2005, Sydney Swans won their first AFL premiership in, I think it was like 72 years or something like that. And in the elimination final, I remember it clearly. I was finishing work at the Capitol Theatre. The game was on. So I missed the start of the game. They were playing Geelong. And I was getting on a bus to meet my mate Horn. I forget where. I think it was down in Paddington or something. So this is before mobile phones and shit. You couldn't fucking watch anything on your... It wasn't before mobile phones. It was before smartphones. You couldn't fucking get the internet on your phone. This is 2005, baby. So I jumped on this bus and I asked the bus driver. I'm like, do you know what the AFL scores are? And he's like, fucking... Geelong is smashing Sydney Swans. And it was like 30, 40 points or something like that. They were down. They were just getting hammered all night. So I was like, all right, they're going to lose. That's the end of the season. Anyway, I get off the fucking bus. I get to the fucking pub. 
and the Swans have made a fucking giant comeback. There's like a minute and a half left. The Swans are down by like four points and Nick Davis has kicked like three goals in the last quarter. I can't remember the exact details, but there was like seven or eight seconds remaining. Fucking Nick Davis. Nick fucking Davis. His training regimen was like eating McDonald's and fucking sleeping. The laziest player in the world. He's kicked three goals in the last quarter to drag us back into the game. Seven seconds remaining. He fucking crumbs a ball from the ruck. Kicks a snap goal. We win. We're into the preliminary final. And then everything after that just seemed like it was fate. You know what I mean? It was like the greatest fucking comeback I've ever seen. That one was. That that particular Geelong game. I just saw the light the last minute. <laughs> but I was fucking screaming my head off when he kicked that goal. And to say the boy Al got lit that night, I got fucking lit. But everything after that just seemed meant to be. And then the Swans won the next game. Then they fucking beat West Coast in the grand final. And West Coast had the best fucking team. They had Ben Cousins, Chris Judd, Embley, Kerr. Fuck, they had a hell of a team. I don't know how we beat them. And Leo Barry took the mark of the fucking century with like 15 seconds remaining. It was getting fired into West Coast forward line. And one of the happiest days of my fucking life. That was a magic time when Sydney Swans won that grand final. The whole city of Sydney packed out. Everyone was vibing. It was the fucking best. Well, there was a little bit of that vibe to this game. The Swans looked fucking shit. And then they just clicked. They just fucking didn't give up. And they played about 10 minutes of football the whole game. And they ended up winning. And I was going to keep it low key. I kept it low key last grand final. I didn't want to say anything. But I'm just feeling it this one. I don't care if we lose this one. I'm just saying it. I'm feeling some vibes. A win like that changes things. It changes everything. I was thinking during the match because I thought we were going to lose. I was like, this could be like five years of this bullshit where we play well during the season and then we fucking bomb out in the finals and then that becomes our thing and it becomes a habit and once you get a habit, it's hard to break. Like, this is going to fucking suck because we have so many good fucking players. Like, this should have been our year, but fucking the coaches suck, the players suck. It's going to be five years. I don't know how we're going to get out of this rut. And it all fucking changed in the last 10 minutes of that fucking quarter. And now the clouds have parted and there's some blue sky and I'm looking forward to the rest of the fucking season now. There's only two games remaining. Sydney Swans play in two weeks. If they win that, it's a grand final. And then grand final time, baby. I don't want to get ahead of myself, though, but fuck, what a fucking game. The fucking Swannies. It's been 12 years since I last won, and it was seven years. 2005, so seven years before that. So it's been 19 years since a fresh-faced young Boyle in 2005 was celebrating the Sydney Swans grand final. Fuck, that was joyful. So was the 2012 one. I went off my fucking skullet after the 2012 one as well. Anyway, fucking what a game. The Sydney Swans. I feel a little bit of magic in the air. There's something fucking tingling. There's something going on. There's vibrations. And I'm one thing, if anything, I'm a conduit for vibrations. Anyway, that'll fucking do it for tonight. Enjoy the rest of your weekend and I'll see you the fuck later.